on the agenda here today. We try to keep it at least relatively on time. Um, really, I to turn the volume up too high. There, <clears> that <throat> worked though. Um, really uh, wonderful to see the level of engagement um, that people seem to be feeling around this endeavor. Um, my experience with uh, efforts like this is that oftentimes they dissipate into, um, I don't know, eddies and walking around here at four o'clock, there was nobody anywhere. Nobody in here, nobody in the hallway, everybody was, I was very pleasantly surprised considering the level of independence of thought <laughs> of the individuals in the room. Uh, quite impressive. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we obviously don't have time to fully um, report on what was conveyed or, or discussed in each of the groups. Um, I would like to give each of the group leaders a chance to at least say a couple of things. Um, um, obviously, as I said before, the reason we st structured the event with this day being at the beginning of the conference is so there's plenty of time for these conversations to continue over the evening today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Um, so perhaps we can give people a chance to share any um, key thoughts that were conveyed in each of the rooms, and then uh, we'll conclude hopefully relatively on time. Dorn, are you here? Anything you want to share with what got conveyed in your group? What happened in my group? Any, any, any insights or, or thoughts that were <laughs> relevant to the larger group? Uh, well, uh, I think the, the question was about the uh, Um, so uh, yeah, our, our group, I, th I think we, we, we dove in a little bit on the, the cost of deployment and what that would look like and how we could can scale that. Um, we had a number of different uh, um, scenarios uh, depending on uh, what uh, sort of the scope of your organization and your network. But uh, basically, uh, we have some very low cost ways to to get farm OS integrated into pretty much any any operation um, and so if you're interested in uh, hosting uh, uh, or having it hosted uh, make it sort of the very low cost easy way to get going uh, talk to Mike Stenta he can get you up and going um, but I would recommend if you're interested as an organization uh, in doing uh, field projects or being a hub, uh, connecting with us uh, and with the, the uh, folks at PASA who are sort of piloting the training program <coughs> to get uh, folks up and going on the ground. And I guess um, I'll also say uh, back, this is unrelated, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, so uh, we, we talked about uh, don't call ourselves farmers. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, along those tracks to add in another part of that conversation. I'm particularly uh, fond of uh, uh, natural philosophers, which is pre, which is an earlier form of uh, systems-based science, and uh, was very participatory. And then also uh, a term I use is physiocrat, which is the which is the governance of nature, and it's what the the Enlightenment first economists in 1750 called, and they were the first to. Uh, talk about uh, soil as the basis for uh, national wealth, and one of the Kesne was the uh, actually inspired Adam Smith prior to Wealth of Nations, and he hypothesized uh, that blood did not terminate at the limbs but circulated, and then applied that to the landscape. So I thought that's the the root of physiocratic governance of nature. So you should hear Doran really give us full speech on that topic. It's very enlightening. It's really, it's really deep and very thoughtful. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, Greg? The gizmo? I mean, I don't think we had, there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I think, heavy duty conversation going well, on. I think there was just a lot of, like, technical questions and um, some people with a lot of knowledge in the room who had thoughts and suggestions and um, I think it's sort of clear that it remains open the best type of especially lab measurements that we should be making um, and that that will be a process that we change over time. Um, I would really love to have um, like working groups engaged in 
identifying uh, what those measurements would be um, that sort of fit the like good enough, cheap enough, fast enough spot, which is our sweet spot to make it possible to get the quantity of measurements that we would need. Um, uh, but uh, it's just a lot of good discussion. Uh, yeah, a lot. I'll just say one other. Yeah, one other thing. Um, a, a lot of discussion about the the thought process that went into where we're headed and how we're doing that, and uh, that's great. And what I want to mention is that the way we are doing this is not the best way. And so, part of what we want to do with building a collaborative platform is to create a space where other people who disagree with our approach can experiment with it and run with it. So once we have prototype devices out there and people can get their hands on them, um, we're trying to get to initial proof of concept really quickly, really cheaply, so we can get device in people's hands so that they can say, well, I don't like that you looked at phenolics and proteins. I think we should look at carotenoids and flavonoids. And they'll be free to do that. And we'll build a platform in which they can share that uh, broadly. So that was the other piece that I just wanted to say that uh, I thought a lot of the questions um, that came up were along those lines. So. Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> you want to be adversarial or computational or say no to your, your, your parents? Go. Come on. <laughs> There's a space for you too. Um, uh, room D was the only one that was unlit. I'm not sure if they're hiding somewhere. I don't see Christopher um, here. Were they? Um, uh, maybe I didn't get them and they're still in there. <laughs> Good. Let them keep going. <laughs> a little extra time on money is not a bad thing. <laughs> um, what's that? That was room D. It was Christopher and I don't see him. And room D was the door was closed and the light was off, so I didn't find them. Yeah, good, <laughs> great. Okay, we'll skip that, Mark. All uh, right. So briefly, we had about ten people in the room, and we went through and listed both. Everyone told their story about sort of their connection to the this conference, but then they listed at least one organization. The net result is I wrote on a flip chart a couple of pages worth of information. We're going to gather all of that for anyone interested. They, they're going to send each of the individuals is going to send that same story to me as an email. We're going to accumulate it all and make it available to obviously the BFA and anyone else that's interested. Either let someone within the BFA know, and we'll be happy to share the organizations that they were thinking of. Just to give you an example, uh, Joe uh, Moskowitz had a 5,000 people database with 4,000 farmers in it that might be interested, some of them at least, in this farm OS. And not all of them, but uh, the ones that are maybe more technology savvy are the younger ones. So uh, lots of power. And the question I guess we did leave with is this, and I would suggest for the next three days. How do we collaborate would be the question I would ask each of you to start thinking about asking when you're having a conversation and you're enjoying it and don't want it to stop. Yes, sir. Just, you know, two weeks ago, I was at a very large nutrition conference, American College of Nutrition. They're really into this stuff. They actually gave Dr. Awesome. Well, then I'm gonna. I'll give you. Come see me. I'll give my email. I'll give my email, and we, we'll get. Uh, we'll get that, and we'll include it in the database. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mark's on the board. He's very engaged. He's like a. What are you? A professional coach, uh, among other things. He gets things done. So, if you're looking for somebody who's going to be like a live wire and make sure things get done. This is part of the you know follow-up process. <laughs> feel, feel free to engage, Mark. Okay, Kathleen, where are you? There you are. Oh, she does. Awesome. Funders are still raising money. They're not coming yet. <laughs> it's like a hotline in there. The still could, the funds are coming in exactly. All right, I had a great group and. Um, so nutrition is always, you know, a feisty topic. Um, and what we really talked about was opportunities, concerns, and I'm a terrible note taker, so I'll do my best. 
um, opportunities we really saw it's really uh, changing the next generation so using it uh, as a teaching tool in community gardens nursing medical schools really to help make that connection so that we uh, so that the consumer understands that when we are changing the quality and the taste of the food that's re that's really an improvement in taste so we really have to start at a very young age helping the next generation understand that there really is a difference that if we really uh, focus in nutrition on healing qualities, the healing qualities of fruit and prevention that we're really going to fall on deaf ears, that that conversation hasn't gone anywhere, it isn't going anywhere, that people don't generally take action uh, or not motivated by prevention. So we have to really get them where, where they might be motivated and that might be on the quality of food and taste. And so we might be able to really implement that by showing them exactly what that tastes like uh, by doing it with young children and I certainly see that in the public schools I do taste testing programs in schools and you can actually show young children the difference between uh, what real food tastes like versus uh, poor quality food. So uh, we also talked about human behavior and it's very difficult to motivate people to change and that we are a nation of excess consumption and that we really have to use this opportunity over the next two years as we're working on the device to really, really help the consumer understand why it's important to have nutrient-dense food. If they don't understand why it's important, it really doesn't matter what the gizmo does how it does it, because they have to understand what it means to them. So I encourage everybody to, if you haven't already, looked at the TED Talk, uh, Simon Sinek, on what's the why, and understand why businesses are successful. Uh, he is the most successful TED Talk ever watched, it still is, and he really outlines what that looks like. So when you're trying to motivate the consumer, on why it matters and why your product matters, then you have to explain to them why it matters to them. Don't tell them what it does and don't tell them how it does it. Tell them why it matters to them. That's the only thing you should be telling them. And so if you can convince them of why it matters to them, then you'll convince them to buy the product. Um, I think the other thing we talked about is that people uh, are concerned about food for healing and prevention, but again, those things are not motivating factors sort of focus on taste. And uh, some of the concerns that people talked about was that we are all uh, at a different place on the spectrum, that some people are not even motivated to eat healthy food at all, and that if they are pointing the gizmo at food and it comes back uh, lower on the scale, they may not even be motivated to eat it at all. So in other words, the carrot is of low quality, so you know what, I'm not even going to bother. And certainly that is not what we want the consumer to be doing. We want them to be eating less processed food. And so encouraging these conversations to be happening, they have to be happening uh, on the spectrum. So we want the consumer to be eating uh, as many real foods in the first place and getting them to, to be eating uh, real, you know, unprocessed foods, and then recognizing that this device is really going to have a different conversation depending on the consumer and their motive. Uh, and so recognizing the importance that the, uh, that the conversation is going to shift depending on who your audience is. Um, so I think that was it. I think that was pro pretty much everything was wrapped up under those main areas. I would encourage anybody in my room who's interested in nutrition and interested in collaborating, certainly you can reach out to me. I'm in the, um, in the bulletin because I'm, I'm talking a couple of times, so I'm happy to collaborate with you in terms of um, meeting any of Dan's goals. Thanks. Thank you, Kathleen. Dan? All right, so my group, uh, we were anxious to get going right away with this gizmo, let me tell you. There were demands for protocols, for experimental design, for what is on the data sheet and how do we know that all these samples that are going to be sent in are arriving at the lab with all the requisite information. So our discussion revolved around uh, implementation, I guess. and in a sense. And toward the end of the conversation, we, uh, excuse me, we, 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 we both, or we, we all understood the higher level question here 
at hand is, does it matter how we grow our food? And so there was concern about how do we marry that higher level question with the details that are going to make implementation of this gizmo um, return the kind of samples and yield the kind of information that we all want. So there was a bit of discussion about proper experimental design in order to um, really make this thing fly and soar like we hope it, it will. A few sort of particulars here that we felt were important um, on both the, the detail level questions and the higher level was, okay, this might sound kind of silly for a crowd, but let's make sure that whoever is participating in these experiments is competent at growing crops. You know, it might seem um, like that's obvious, but there were some questions about that. Obviously that we pay attention to things like varieties and cultivars in reporting um, data. We wanted protocols. We wanted to know that we were, um, whoever is doing all of this, that it's standardized. So there was a call for, for standards here. And um, I think that was about it, sort of in the interest of um, uh, my group. If there's anything else, I see a couple of my group members out there, anything else that I forgot that we, that we hit on and that we thought was important? Sounds fine for now. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Sorry to push the time uh, on the media and messaging conversation. Um, conversations today have been engaged with Washington Post, Time, um, who else? USA Today, and Wired in five minutes. So um, just saying. Uh, <laughs> the media is active. Uh, what's that? I thought it was Scientific American, but you have to ask Richard. I don't remember. It was a while ago. Um, I think it was Scientific American, but anyway, we talked at the time today. So, um, do you want to say a couple things and then we can conclude? Yeah. Right. We have five minutes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because a lot of what everybody said here really already tied in with that, that messaging piece. And, you know, that's been a big part of you know, the challenge that, that Dan and I have been facing here, you know, recently because it is, you know, it is this, you know, this big, beautiful, epic opportunity, right? And as we know how, you know, American minds tend to think and everything is really like uber distilled, you know, and almost like quite reductionistic, I would say. So, um, you know, creating, you know, bringing that into that model without, you know, losing much of the essence, you know, is, is a challenge. But, you know, really, you know, the key for that, um, you know, that has been identified, you know, is, is, is finding those places where, you know, where people do dial in and what they really care about. And when, when if you are able to distill it down, you can see that what, what do we really care about? You know, we connect, we care about our health. We care about the health of our family. I mean, ultimately, I mean, if you're if you're if you're sick or not feeling well, you know, there's it's so it's so basic. You know, you, things get down to the basics really really quick. So that that's a key part of the messaging. And I loved hearing what other people were saying because a lot of that does tie in, you know, with the messaging that we're working on. Specifically, um, you know, in in our group, you know, we I guess we just you know identified you know different you know constituencies you know like. Like like the who I guess I guess we kind of did the the who and the how, and um, you know some of the 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 better messaging I think that that came out of that um, you know was what uh, Ken said um, is that not all of your food is created equal, right? And and finding you know that 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 hook, and so. Um, um, so yeah, that's if, if you guys have any great ideas for messaging, I'm really open to to hearing them. You know, or if, even if you don't think it's great, but if you have an idea, um, I don't want to you know uh, exclude anybody from anything. But I'm open to hear it. The one that I actually want to make sure that we do, and the first gentleman we were just talking about, the Native Americans, soil is medicine. Should be the message. We've heard food is medicine for since the past, yeah. but soil is medicine, and if the press gets a hold of that, I would think that tightens the timeline between understanding the connection between soil and our health. Yeah. So.
All right. Um, so as I said before, um, with quite limited time here, uh, for me personally, in the moment, um, I've been really uh, grateful, appreciative for everyone who's attended, everyone who's speaking at this conference, who's attracted other people to the conference. It's one of these big sort of shell games where you get a couple of cool people and then other people say, oh, they're going to be there. Then they show up and then everybody's like, oh, they're going to be there. And so um, we've really got really a wonderful audience uh, and uh, speakers here. And I want to thank you all for attending and really looking forward to the next couple of days. Uh, this conversation uh, is obviously just getting going. Um, and we have the next couple of days to meet in person. Uh, this is certainly a key focus of where we're at organizationally. Um, you know, my experience in these types of events is, you know, most people generally get excited and then most people generally don't follow up. Um, anyone know about that? Been part of one of those events? So, yeah, it's called Going Back to Your Life. Um, so those who really are excited and do stay in touch, we are certainly doing this and um, we welcome your engagement. Uh, you'll certainly be hearing about everything that, as it proceeds through, you know, our, you know, media channels, <laughs> uh, website, newsletters, etc. cetera. Um, so I think, what, Linda, you want to say something? I just want to share that the article on the end is in Scientific America, March 1st, 2013, Organic versus Conventional, Organic, Today, Legal, Summer. Yeah, I thought it was Scientific American. Anyways, um, it wasn't very, it was like a paragraph. It was fairly an article. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so yeah, uh, I would say welcome the uh, conversation, the community, the development, the, you know, the whole, the whole um, milieu, the mycelial um, mode, um, shall we say. Uh, so thank you all very much. Um, hope you all had a good time and are feeling energized. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to um, ask you a favor. For those who have a few minutes, uh, we're doing interviews for a film, a documentary film about um, um, living soils. So if in the coming uh, days you have a, a couple of minutes and you want to talk to us, we'll be in the, uh, I think it's session room C, and we have a little setup. It could be a very short interview, longer, but uh, just to, to let you know that there's a film and an educational series that is going to be built, and these are tools that will, um, you know, spread the word and also um, spread some of your messages if you're uh, if you're up for it. So you're welcome to come and see me, or come directly to that room. Thank you. Thank you, Noam. All right. Thank you all. We'll be in touch. <laughs>